So what I want you to spend the remaining time, seven minutes to talk about is some of the conceptual barriers in thinking through the answer here. Um, I think it starts from, uh, how do I put it? Um, so I, I think it's, uh, hmm. It's not necessarily useful. Um, so I don't want to say, say it's useful. Um, I think it's uh, attractive <laughs> on the face of it to think of current like uh, cars moving in, uh, moving along a freeway. And when you think of current that way, there is something very unintuitive about the answers to A and B and how this is shaped here. So what I'm telling you here is that on the broadest part of the conductor, where if I'm taking resistance per length, the resistance per length here might be the smallest. And um, I'm telling you that amount of current that crosses through this cross section at any point in time is the exact the same amount of current as through the cross section here. And if you've gone the route of thinking of um, charges moving like cars moving on a road, then using that wrong analogy to ground your intuition, you would uh, uh, wrongly <laughs> go into thinking that in this uh, wider part, current flows more easily, so more current flows. And in this narrower part, current flows less easily, so uh, current is less there. That's an easy, intu intuitive, conceptual mistake to make. And what I want to highlight here is that one, that that's wrong. That's just not how it works at all. And <laughs> what I want to offer you instead is, instead of car analogy, which happens to fail here unless you take a super careful care to set it up correctly. And I think all of that ends up being too much work. I want to give you more, um, more useful analogy that matches up much more closely to current flow. And that's what you did for the, the opening discussion this week, the water analogy. So I want to show you a simulation involving water flow and um, show you how that uh, water analogy can help address anything that you see here that seems unintuitive. Now, so let me go to the simulation. Um, a brief kind of explanation of why, well, I mean, water analogy is useful, but I think I initially actually wanted to find the actual electricity simulation and None of these simulations do what I wanted to do. So that's why I just have to <laughs> go to the water analogy because they do have a um, pretty good fluid dynamics simulation that does exactly what I wanted to do. It's this one called the fluid pressure and flow. I think if you are in my physics foray, you might have seen one of the lecture videos where I do use this to, I don't know, illustrate Bern Bernoulli's principle, which Technically, in my physics foray, isn't a required topic. It's optional topic. <laughs> so you know, for a bunch of different reasons, this is a good, uh, good thing to revisit. See what um, what intuition we can get out of this uh, physical picture. And so, let me go through that in the next four or five minutes. By the way, this is an interesting um, innovation at Fed. Java simulations. It used to be that you had to download. But I think these days you can just run it right in your browser. So, um, I mean, it, I don't think it might not run on every um, every device, but at least uh, this is a really interesting innovation. So uh, I think it, it's this simulation that I had mostly in mind, although you can definitely, um, like with the water tower, there's a kind of, um, lessons you can draw from here in terms of how uh, pressure or the height difference matches the voltage. But it's the flow one that I want to talk about the most. 
All right, so this is the fluid uh, flow simulation. And let's see, I guess I should tell you the, the elements of the analogy. So I think the physical objects are fairly um, obvious <laughs> what they represent. These that represent, uh, you know, representative samples of water element, and and it would ex represent the exact the same thing in the electrical context, like a charge elements. Um, so, so that's what those that represent. So this is a visual way to represent a flow, whether it's a charge flow or a water flow. Um, and uh, there's a way where you can measure speed. And um, so here, the speed that they're measuring is, um, would match up with what your textbook calls the drift velocity. I think if you're looking at your textbook, there's a place somewhere here. I think it's in this section, um, drift velocity, yeah. So, um, so the reason this term is introduced is because, you know, electrons, microscopic objects, their thermal velocity is actually much higher than drift velocity. So drift velocity is kind of an average velocity moving in one direction. And that's what this speed would represent. So I think that's a kind of one-to-one -one thing. Um, the place where you have to kind of match with the, the language of the fluid uh, flow with electrical current flow is uh, the ones dealing with the pressure. So I think in the fluid dynamics context, um, there are two different um, things that kind of match up with the pressure. There's a, there's a kind of, um, uh, something that would represent the potential energy, like if one end of the pipe is higher than the other end, then there's a potential energy difference between here and here. And I think in the case of this simulation, the potential energy difference actually does lead to, so okay, trying to get the bottom of each pipe, it does lead to actual pressure difference. So, um, so yeah. There's that. And that pressure difference actually does drive the, um, I actually, sorry, uh, the way this simulation is set up, I don't think it actually, because it's uh, set up to set a constant flow rate, it wouldn't actually set up, uh, cause the, yeah, yeah, it doesn't cause the uh, fluid to flow any faster. Um, so never mind that. Um, so, but um, in the fluid context, uh, I think uh, maybe um, more succinct way to say this, it's the pressure difference that drives the uh, that drives the flow of um, um, materials like this, and the electrical version, um, electrical analog to the pressure or pressure difference is the voltage or the voltage difference. Now with this simulation, there is no uh, pressure difference between one end of the pipe to the other end of the pipe. And um, you know, that is actually a situ real situation you can have if you have, um, uh, if you have a frictionless um, material, if you have resistance-less material, if you have a superconductor, you actually don't need any, uh, you don't need any voltage difference between the ends of the superconductor to have a persistent current setup. So there's a real thing. Um, in this simulation, for some reason, turning on the friction does nothing. So, um, so I don't know. Um, so let's not talk about that too much. What I do want to talk about is um, how to connect your intuition about this kind of flow and how, how different aspects of this change uh, as you, what different aspects change and what don't change as you change, as you change different parameters here. So the main parameter you can change here is the, the, the width of the pipe. And that's a, uh, yeah, width of the pipe, you can change it there. 
here. And um, that change in the width of the pipe is what would uh, correspond to change in the width of this conductor. And you can see in the simulation already how this uh, narrowed pipe uh, affects the flow of the material. And I guess I hope that this makes intuitive sense that when this uh, stuff um, flows through this narrower portion, the water flow doesn't slow down as it flows through the narrow portion. It actually speeds up. And the reason it has to speed up has to do with what the actual constraint in the flow of material here is. The constraint here is the flow rate. It's, uh, you know, volumes per second. That's uh, the actual constraint here. So when I have flux meter, as I move this flux meter around, it's been, so this simulation has set up so that flow rate is fixed here. And uh, I can describe that as flow rate being fixed at the entrance end. Then by the property of the water, this flow rate has to be the flow rate through any particular cross section throughout this entire length. And the property of water that's most relevant to here is that it's incompressible. That, um, so I specify the flow rate in volume per second and whatever volume, whatever volume of water that comes in, that's the same volume that has to live here every second. It's, uh, uh, you know, this is the general property of liquid that they don't compress that well. So, um, so however much flow is coming in that pushes out the flow all the way down the chain, all the way out here. So that's the real constraint here. And if you think through the traffic example, that's not really the constraint that you have under most traffic circumstances because the traffic fluid is compressible. You can have uh, distances between cars that change quite fluidly. So, so the thing to be mindful here is that it's the flow rate that's kept constant. And in order to keep the flow rate the same as the cross-sectional area changes, what changes is, um, you know what? I have no idea how they define flux. Oh, I guess the flux is the flow rate per area. Um, so I think uh, rather than flux, what I think is more useful as a kind of physical thing is the speed of the particles. So in order to have the same flow rate here as here, particles simply have to move faster. That is the speed, the drift speed of velocity V times the cross sectional area has to be constant. So that as the cross sectional area decreases, speed has to increase. Then, you might still wonder that, like, how does that come to be? And because, I mean, it, it feels like there has to be some other things changing as the particles move faster here. And especially if you think in microscopic terms, that's definitely correct because the particles moving through here have more kinetic energy. They are moving faster in terms of, you know, drift velocity. And when you measure the pressure at different points, you see why. So this is, you know, entirely about fluids. So the, this is fluid flowing kind of from midpoint to here, to here, there's a distinct pressure difference. So it's this pressure difference that, that, um, that pushes the, um, the water element through so that it's a faster here. And once it's through this portion, then the pressure difference is the other way. And that starts to slow them down. And you can see a similar situation with the electrical current flow here and voltage here. So I said, um, referring to why the correct answer here might be unintuitive that when you are looking at resistance per length, that resistance per length would be less here 
compared to here, but still the amount of electric current flow is the same. Well, if you look at the voltage change per length, what you will find that voltage change here is less per length compared to the voltage change here per length. So that when you say apply Ohm's law over that um, slice of the conductor, that, um, that the current ends up being the same because the resistance of this slice is the lower, but voltage difference across the slice is also lower compared to the resistance here and the voltage difference um, across the slice. And, and, and that intuition will help you as you work and think through, let's say series of circuit, because when you have series of circuit, one of the things that you have to get through early on is that the current through the entire series of circuit is constant. The current through a low resistance element in a series of circuit and the current through the high resistance element in a series of circuit, they're the same. And the reasoning that you apply there is the exact same reasoning that applies to this one. That's why the concept, correct conceptual understanding of this setup is useful even as you are moving into more detailed circuit analysis. Because you know, then when you encounter the situation with a series of resistors, you don't see that as something unusual. It's something that was to be expected. So, so I, that's what I want you to talk through and the simulation I want you to show. Let me close this. It's using quite a bit of um, CPU power, I think. 